95% of marriages are able to survive infidelity. Samantha and Steph's arrangement is another affair altogether. The open marriage thing was an absolute accident for us. I was working at Starbucks at the time and I got a note that was delivered to me from a customer and it was just um, something about, I think you're attractive, summed up. And here's my email address and I took it home and I showed him and we had a weekend of really great sex because he was actually really complimented that somebody um, was interested in his wife. And his wife was interested in dating both men and women. Yeah, I guess even, even at the beginning, I knew that as long as she was happy, I was happy for her. And maybe, maybe part of it was that I was so easygoing that I, I was too easygoing about it. And I was just kind of like, OK, have fun. It worked for me. Yeah. This is good. <laughs> Well, there's all sorts of different kinds of marriages and what is the place of marriage in the modern world. You can find out more by watching the new documentary, Thoroughly Modern Marriage. We're joined now by the director and producer, Sue Rideout. Sue, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Good. So, Thoroughly Modern Marriage, maybe you can explain uh, what the doc is about. Well, it started when we came across a statistic that said that for the first time in Canadian history, there's actually more unmarried people than married in wow. Canada. So if you take all single people, divorced, widowed, they actually outnumber the number of married people. And that's actually the first time that the balance has shifted that way. So we thought that's a very interesting tipping point because it will have implications for lots of other things. Yeah, right. well, and, and to watch policy try and catch up to, mm -hmm. you know, these changing demographics. But you guys approach this from a social standpoint and a scientific standpoint as well, which is quite fascinating. I mean, people are actually studying what it is uh, about human beings that gives us this urge to, to be in a monogamous relationship. We uh, did some filming with a couple of scientists in New York City who have just started scanning the brains of couples, mostly sort of recently married couples. And what they're looking at, uh, there are three brain systems. One is romantic love, one is the sex drive or lust, and the other is long-term attachment. And they do MRIs of the couple's brains to look at what these systems look like as the relationship evolves. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Who signs up for that? Yeah, we, have, we have to talk about the couple that we met in the clip there because mm -hmm. uh, when people think of marriage, they think of, I guess, the conventional kind of marriage. But you mm -hmm. took a look at uh, a few different kinds yeah. of marriages. Maybe mm -hmm. you can explain what kind of marriages and uh, why you chose to look at them. Mm. Well, I think what I wanted to do was spend some time with somewhere between say six and ten different couples and see what the different kinds of marriages look like and so we spent some time with the open marriage couple that you saw in the clip we spent some time with a couple who've been married for more than 40 years but they live in separate apartments in the same house. Whatever just, works. Think, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. When, you, when you see that and you're married I think there's always part of you that's like it's not a bad idea. <laughs> like yeah. Your own moments, yeah. Right? Well, that whole idea of having your own space. Yeah. You know, somewhere. You know, I mean, the man cave, I guess, is kind of a totally. right. one way of getting to the that. place to escape. A little yes, bit sometimes. exactly. And then with the new laws of same-sex marriages, we met a wonderful couple uh, of women who got married. Yes, and it's very interesting. Actually, Canada was the fourth country in the world to um, legalize gay marriage, and. One in every six gay couples got married in the first year. That's after amazing. They passed. Like there was obviously this pent up demand. People yeah. were waiting for the legislation to be passed. And so Julie and Carly are one of the couples who got married. And common law marriage, where does that fit into the whole scheme of things? We've seen a tripling in the number of common law couples in this country. It's huge. And it's definitely here to stay. Uh, it's on the increase. But what we're seeing is that the average age when people get married is increasing. So yeah. it used to be 30 years ago, a Canadian bride was 23 when she got married. Now she's 28. And wow. sometimes with children already. Yeah, absolutely. So what's happening is that people are postponing marriage. They're making it uh, what we call the capstone of the relationship. In other words, they get together, and it used to be in the old days, after they decided, oh, okay, this is going pretty well, they'd get married. Well, not anymore. They start living together, they solidify their careers, they maybe buy a condo or a house together, 
they maybe start having a family. And then after a while, they look at one another and say, well, this seems to be going pretty well. Maybe <laughs> yeah. we should yeah. have a party and celebrate. And celebrate, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, and, and there's this interesting meeting point between uh, what's happening in terms of, of governance and law and, and what happens with marriage and the impact that each have on each other. Quebec was a great example. I mean, they have one of the, the highest common law rates. And mm -hmm. part of that, or is part of that, driven by the law? Absolutely, because it's the only province in the country where you can live common law for 30 years and when you break up, there's no legal ramifications. You can walk away. Yeah. So there's no can, money at stake. Yeah, there's no money at stake. And so you can understand, particularly for men in that province, yeah. or anyone who is the higher income earner in the couple, they look at this situation and say, well, why would I want to get married? Yeah. Because then I'll owe spousal support when we split up or if we split up. Does anybody get married for love anymore? Yes, well, thank they you for do. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, when you survey 20 and 30 somethings, every they all want to get married. Yeah, it's very interesting, and I don't know how much of it is consumer culture. You know, say yes to the dress and all of the shows yeah. that we see out there. I think people have they've confused the wedding with the marriage. The wedding as a status symbol is yeah. an interesting concept. As yeah, well. you talk yeah. about that quite a bit in the documentary as yeah. well, because it has become this you know, really A, expensive for a lot of people and very yeah. splashy event to sort of announce yourself as being part of the social hierarchy as well as just being married. But more often the couple are paying for the wedding themselves. Yeah. It used to be the parents paid for it and that still does happen to a certain extent. But because we're older when we get married, uh, normally the couple has a bit more control over the ceremony because they put more money into it and it's more their party it's not necessarily their parents' party yeah. the way it used to be. In the well, United. it's just, it's fascinating to see, you know, this one institution, and I think people cerebrally, when I think about it anyway, I understand that it's changing, you know, same-sex couples, but, but to see it all come together and to see the choices that people make, it really is that one social institution that's undergoing massive amounts of change right now. I think the thing is it doesn't mean any one thing anymore. Yeah. You know, everybody sort of gives it their own definition and gives it, its own kind of shape and size and yeah. you know they can tailor it to what they need um, but I think there is something innate about our need to have a ceremony or a ritual that kind of surrounds our relationship I mean that ceremony doesn't necessarily have to come with a certificate that right. says you're legally yeah. married it might just but be a celebration yeah, yeah but I think there is something about having a ceremony and saying to your friends and to your family, we are committed to one another. Yeah. Well, well if you want to find out more, you can check out the documentary. It will be airing 9 o'clock Thursday night on CBC's Doc Zone. It's called Thoroughly Modern Marriage. Thank you so much, Sue. Nice Thank to you. see you. Yeah, Pleasure to see you. you. We're going to take